gentlemen, every day, if not once in a while, we must make a great first impression with somebody we're meeting, or if you go into a business meeting or a work meeting, you want to make that beautiful first impression when you're dressed and pressed, and you want to convey a very positive message. With that said, your attire, the way you look, the way you present yourself, and when you accessorize with a great shoe or perhaps a great timepiece, my favorite to top it off, a great signature scent. So for that occasion, for a scent to make a great impression, I've reached out to some great reviewers and asked them to put together a video with their top choices and they were kind enough to send it to me. So gentlemen, without any further ado, I give you the TGF, Timeless Gentlemanly Fragrances. So without any further ado, let's see what their choices were and I'll meet you right back here in a few with my choices. In the meantime, grab some popcorn, get comfy, because this is going to be a rather long one. Enjoy the show and I'll see you right back here in a few. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. I hope this video finds you well and I want to start things off by saying a very special thank you to my friend Max Forti. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this collaboration and to share with you what I would consider my top three favorite gentlemanly scents. And whenever we think of what should a gentleman smell like, we're usually reminded of our parents, our father in particular, we're reminded of our grandfather, we're reminded of all the men in our lives that have been a source of inspiration for us and what fragrance were they wearing at the time. Now of course we can say Dracar Noir, we can say Polo by Ralph Lauren, but we are a different generation so we want to utilize fragrances that carry over elements from those other fragrances but they do things in a, a, a far more contemporary way. So let me go ahead and get into the list. These are the three fragrances that I think have a very strong gentlemanly appeal to them. And I'm gonna start things off with my number three. And my number three is a favorite of mine and it's one that I've been wearing for many years. And it's by Guerlain and it's called Vetiver. And of course, this is the original formulation. It was very close to running out of a bottle. And then I, I heard about the repackaging so I went ahead and bought a second bottle and I've been wearing this one a lot recently too. It's a really nice sort of fresh, clean, green, classy vetiver scent. I think it's super appropriate for a work environment and it always exudes respect. It, 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 it exudes maturity without being offensive and without being mature, overly mature or dated. The next one in my collection is a fragrance that utilizes the note of lavender. And whenever I think of lavender and the way that it's blended in this fragrance in particular, I can't help but think this is what a gentleman should smell like. And it's by the company Histoire de Parfum. And this one goes by the name 1725 Casanova. This is a really nice blend of lavender, a little bit of almond, some vanilla in the dry down. It does get a little bit powdery though, so if you're not a fan of powdery scents, maybe this is one you should uh, sample first before you commit to buying it. Uh, but nonetheless, every time I smell it, I do think of a gentleman in a suit or at least a jacket attending some sort of semi-formal to formal event, and I think it's a wonderful scent. And I would highly recommend it for anyone out there who is um, looking for something that would be more suitable for a formal occasion. And then to conclude things with my number one pick, uh, this one just screams gentlemen to me. And it's a fragrance that I've had now for a few years and it's a fragrance that many people know because it gets talked about a lot and it gets revered in the community and in the industry. And uh, it's a scent that's been around since 1985, so maybe an older generation was wearing this one. Um, but nonetheless, this is from the House of Creed and it goes by the name Green Irish Tweed. And this is a really nice blend of violet, lemon verbena, it's really fresh, there's a lot of citrus in there, and for those of you who are familiar with the Creed DNA, you know that they do fresh scents the best. And it's super natural, and you can almost picture or envision what the fruits and herbs and plants and ingredients would look like in their natural raw material form because it does it so well. And um, every time I think of this fragrance, I just think this is what a gentleman should wear. This is what a gentleman should smell like. And it's a wonderful, wonderful fragrance. So once again, Max Forti, I want to thank you so much for having me be a part of this collaboration. But I also want to thank you very much for everything that you do for the community, for your website, for your supporting nature, and you're a good natured individual. And I had the pleasure of meeting you in person, and uh, hopefully, we get a chance to meet up again soon. So guys, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. When I'm relaxing in my residence here in England, I love to wear refined gentlemanly fragrances whilst enjoying the finest wines and cuisine and perhaps reading a little Shakespeare. 
But life wasn't always so easy. I came from humble beginnings in the slums of London. At the age of four, I was taken to market to be sold. I was bought by Lord Lumsley as a live-in chimney sweep. Life was tough, but when I reached adulthood, I was promoted to butler. Tragically, Lord Lumsley was murdered several years ago, shortly after altering his will, leaving me as the sole inheritor of his estate. Now I'm in a position to indulge my passions, including my love of fine fragrances. And first of all, a huge thanks to Max Forty for letting me be in this video. It's a real thrill as I've been watching Max's videos since long before I made any of my own. So my first choice is Bentley for Men Intense. This one is a very boozy scent and that's why I chose it. Um, I wanted one that represented what I associate with the English Gentlemen's Club and uh, maybe I could have thrown some tobacco in there but the one I've gone for is this one which has that, a, a very uh, noticeable note of rum or at least some kind of alcohol note that you get in there. Uh, there's a lot of what I consider traditional notes in here from, from the 70s and 80s perfumes. We've got things like patchouli, clary sage, very masculine notes and notes which suggest manliness. And yet with this scent there is a subtle sophistication and many people say almost a niche niche quality about this one. It's also got some incense in there. So for me, for a gentleman who wants to exert an air of authority and masculinity and a little bit of refinement, of course it's from the Bentley car company, well the gentleman might well have his chauffeur drive him around in his Bentley. So let's take a little sniff. Yeah, it's absolutely wonderful when you smell this. I haven't smelt this one for a while because it's summertime here and this isn't really appropriate, but now I'm looking forward to autumn. This scent is really refinement, manliness, sophistication, and it's just a little bit of a ruffian because it's got that boozy element. So I think this is for the gentleman who has great manners, knows how to behave and present himself, but perhaps Underneath it all is a little bit of a cad and a boundary. You might have a little bit of a dark side. The other reason I put this one in there is because it's rather affordable. 100 mils can be got online in America for just $45, and in the UK I got mine for £35. So that's great value. You don't have to spend lots of money or be a wealthy aristocrat to smell like a gentleman. Okay, so next up in my list is going to be Hubigant. Cologne Intense. What a fantastic fragrance this is. This one is a very elegant and refined, soft, understated and sophisticated scent. Uh, so we have here uh, a lot of the traditional elements of a uh, Eau de Cologne fragrance in the opening. So you've got the Sicilian lemon, bergamot, neroli and there's petit grain in there. But underneath that, have got some much more rich ingredients than you expect in your Eau de Cologne, which is why they call it Cologne Intense. Uh, so we've got um, some jasmine in there, there's mate tea, and we have some incense as well in the dry down, which really are just blended so exquisitely well and it just smells so great. I'm gonna spray a little bit of this one on my hand just to remind myself. And it just is so wonderfully blended, this fragrance. The reason I like it is because it's refined. It really has a little bit of an old fashioned smell about it and yet it's perfectly wearable in the modern age. The performance is good in terms of longevity but it doesn't shout too much in terms of projection and, and that can be a good thing. Absolutely fantastic, try it out, gentlemanliness in a bottle. Jeeves, Jeeves, what time is it? That's right, it's 11 a.m. Well, don't just stand there, man. Get me my gin. Poorly little man. So, finally, it's going to be one from Creed. It's Creed's Bois de Portugal, a real favourite of mine. Probably my favourite scent of all time, so I had to pick it. Uh, so this one, we've got bergamot, we've got lavender, sandalwood, and ambergris. It's got great performance. It lasts absolutely ages, and the projection is pretty strong. So you might want to be a bit careful. If you want to be a gentleman, perhaps you don't want to be too loud with your fragrance, so watch out. Restraint with the sprayer on this one is something I have to try and exercise, but I do have difficulty because I love the smell so much. So let's check it out. Oh yeah, it's absolutely exquisite. It reminds you of perhaps an old chest of drawers that's had some scented cards or whatever placed in there to keep things smelling fragrant. It's, it's really got that old wood smell. A little bit almost of sweetness from that lavender. And there is that green bergamot element in the, in the beginning and, and that kind of sticks around to some extent throughout. And of course the great Creed Ambergris dry down is there. So I mean that, that's a really fantastic ingredient that they've got in so many of their fragrances that gives them that luxurious fragrance. The colour of the label there sort of conjures up the dark green feel of this one with a little bit of purpleness from that lavender. 
a superb scent going right back to 1987. It was Frank Sinatra's signature scent. It was a, uh, the absolute essence of a gentleman and perhaps again one with a little bit of a, a dark side, a little bit of roguishness about him and I, I want that in my gentlemanly sense too. So for me this one, perhaps my favourite scent of all time, I absolutely adore the smell. It's deep, it's rich, it's satisfying, it performs really well, great for cold weather and fine for spring and fall as well but I wouldn't wear it in the summer. Rather expensive as all Creed scents are. Thank you so much again Max for having me on the show and just remember everybody out there, whatever we're doing in life, let's project. Good morning, everyone. This is Lanner Smith from Sense Memory, and I want to thank Max for inviting me to join in on the Timeless Gentleman's Fragrance collaboration. Now, many of you know that I'm a huge fan of uh, Chanel, and a lot of you would probably expect me to choose Chanel Pour Monsieur or Chanel Pour Monsieur Eau de Parfum uh, and a couple of other Chanel's to be in my list, but I'm going with some different ones, not the obvious choices for me, but nevertheless ones that I really love. Now the first one I'm beginning with comes from the house of Maura and Wurtz. It was created in 1792 and it's of course the amazing number 4711. Now this fragrance has been around for centuries and uh, it is really something that I start off each morning with. Uh, I take a shower and I take this incredible fragrance, which is very similar to Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino in feel. And I've often wondered if uh, Tom Ford didn't say, let's do something that is evocative of this amazing scent that has been around and it's been a foundation for men's and women's fragrances for all these years. I love the bottle. This is, this is a huge bottle, 400 ml. And I just love the design. You can see there are all of these awards that it's won over the years, mostly in the 1800s. And on the back, you can see that it is made in Germany. Um, and what I do is I take my shower, and right now, one of my favorite soaps is this beautiful um, sandalwood soap that's made in, uh, in India. And I take my sandalwood soap shower, and then I get out and I just splash this. I put a whole bunch in my hand and just put it all over and it just gets me set up for the day and smells so wonderful. It only lasts maybe 20, 25 minutes, but it's a nice base for, for moving on into the day with my, my fragrance of the day. So that's the first one. The second timeless gentleman's fragrance I've chosen is from 1981, and it's from the house of Cartier in the Santos de Cartier. This is an amazing, beautiful gentleman's fragrance. And, um, it, the major notes that you get out of this are sandalwood and pepper. It is just beautiful. It is a classic. It is uh, timeless, as I said. And this is a fragrance for anyone who wants to push the limits of their uh, sophistication to a new level. This is a great fragrance, and I wear it all the time. I simply love it. Now, the third gentleman's fragrance that I've chosen is a really amazing fragrance from the House of Hermes from 1951. It is a leather, it is both for men and for women, and it's the beautiful Eau de Hermes, and there you see it. I'm wearing it right now. This fragrance is such a classic, such a beautiful fragrance for men and for women, and I love their packaging. Look at that on the back side of the bottle. Isn't that amazing? I love that illustration. Um, and it's, of course, a man making, working for MS, making one of their beautiful leather products. This fragrance is just a real go to for me for a, a super elegant evening. Um, I just feel so just wonderful when I wear it. I, that's the only way I can put it. I just, it is one of my favorite leathers. So there we have my three choices for Timeless Gentleman Classics. Again, thank you, Max, and this is Landon Smith from Sense Memory. Cheers. What's going on, guys? So my name is Chad from the channel, A Gentleman's Journey. Before I get into my picks, I just want to send a huge thank you to Max Forty for the invite. I really do appreciate it, my friend. So the first one in this list is actually going to be something that I've talked about, or I should say the, the brand. I actually mentioned the brand, the brand 
quite a few times on my channel and no it's not Ferragamo I assure you no Ferragamo will be in this list if you're familiar with my channel I'm a bit of a Ferragamo fanboy I will admit but I have mentioned this house quite a few times and it's actually going to be from the house of Canali and this is Canali Men now this is just a little spray can a travel spray if you will so I was a little bit surprised and a little bit disappointed when it actually came like this and not the original bottle I got this off eBay along with a toiletries bag and it came with like body wash, aftershave and this. So I was a little bit disappointed, however, that really shouldn't matter because the scent itself is just phenomenal. Uh, it's definitely not a lot like a lot of the other designers out there. It's got about 19 or 21 notes. It's just got a, an overabundance of notes along with a lot of the other Canali fragrances. Some of the notes are pineapple, leather. Uh, floral, citrus, woods, it's just its just got a whole whack of notes. But what I get for the most part is pineapple leather with a little bit of a fruity floral uh, dry down. Great signature scent, it's masculine, it's classy. I get about seven to eight hours with this one. And unfortunately, because it's, it is discontinued along with all the other Canali fragrances, you really have to hunt for a good price, uh, price tag on this one because they are quite expensive. On eBay, I actually got mine, I believe it was about $85 or $90 American. I'm actually here in Toronto, Canada, and I think it was about $110 or $120 Canadian with shipping. That's actually a lot more than what I would generally pay for, but I have no regrets because uh, it's going up for about $200 to $250 on eBay. You know, But if you can find it at a good discounter or just a reasonable price online, definitely get into it. Now the second one that I want to mention is going to be from the house of Cartier or Cartier. It's going to be Eau de Cartier d'Essence d'Orange. Uh, this is just a great scent. It is marketed towards unisex, uh, which I could kind of see because of that violet note, but it's definitely a lot more masculine with the woods and with the patchouli. The orange note in it is quite nice and to my nose I get a bit of an incense-y vibe if you will. There is no incense in this one. It is more of a spring and a summertime fragrance. Some people will say it's daytime but I get more of a nighttime vibe with this one. And I get about five to six hours of longevity. I've worn it maybe about four or five times so not a lot but it is a really good fragrance. This will run you between $70 to $90, so if you if you look around, you'll probably get it for a better price than this one, but just a great find. And the last one in this list is going to be from the House of Bulgaria. See? I told you. No Ferragamos. So this is going to be a flanker to the original, and this one is Bulgaria Man in Black. The original is Bulgaria Man, which is a spring and summertime freshie. This is more of an autumn and wintertime fragrance. It is very elegant, classy, and polar opposites of Bulgarian Man. Bulgarian Man is actually a classy, uh, fresh fragrance, but this, like what I mean by polar opposite, is that it's deep, it's dark, and it's a little bit loud. Some of the notes are rum, amber, tuberose, citrus, orange blossom, woods, and just a lot more. I get about eight to 10 hours with this one. This is more of a going out fragrance when you're dressed up. Very classy, very elegant. I find that the boozy note really does add that touch of sophistication. And uh, you can get this between $20 and $50 online. This is just a little 30 ml. Um, when I was looking in New York City, I was, I was actually in Manhattan, they were advertising this and selling it for about $40 American at Century 21. I wanted something a little bit more uh, cheaper and I actually got this from one of the re reviewers along with this one. So if you look within the community, you could probably find yourself a really good deal on a lot of these fragrances. But Bulgarian Man is just a tremendous winter fragrance. So those are my picks. Max, again, thank you so very much for, for asking me to be a part of this. My name is Chad from A Gentleman's Journey, and I'll see you later. Hello guys, Greg here from the YouTube channel Boy 76 Very quick plug, if you are in the UK and you're looking for samples, check out my online store. It's FragranceSamplesUK.com Plug out of the way, very big thanks to my good friend Max Forte for organising this video and for inviting to be, me to be in it. Do appreciate it Max, thank you. So my all time favourite gentleman scents. 
So I'm going to start out with what is probably the most classic of all, the one where it all began really for Gentleman Fougere fragrances. <clears throat> originally launched 134 years ago this one, but it was re-released in 2010. And this is by Ubigant and it's called Fougere Royale. Now the perfumer who recreated this is the brilliant Rodrigo Flores Rue, but it is said that um, lots of other perfumers also collaborated on this one, including Roger Dove. So it's a very, I'd describe it as a fresh, clean, um, fresh green fragrance, it's herbal. It's got quite a floral aspect in here, but despite having the floral aspect, it's still all man. It's woody, uh, earthy, there's musk, it's got a mossy feel to it. If you like Dracar Noir, but you want something that's better blended and more refined, look at this one. It doesn't smell the same, it's in the same vein, but it's like kind of just a much, much better version of that style of fragrance. It just absolutely smells classy. At some stage I'm going to do a full review on this to hopefully do it for justice, but it is a true masterpiece in perfumery in my opinion. So that's Ubigon's Fougere Royal. Royale, <coughs> excuse me. So the next one, well this has got a lot, of live, lot to live up to now, but I think it succeeds. This one's from the house of Roger Parfum, and this is called Scandal Pour Homme. Um, if you like fragrances like Paco Rabanne Pour Homme, the original, this is one to try. It's in that kind of style of fragrance. Very mature, but this one doesn't come across as dated at all. Um, starts out very citrusy, it develops into a woody, spicy lavender. There's um, vetiver and musk in here. Smells like class and money, this one. How you'd expect a real sort of, you, uh, you know, distinguished guy in his 40 or 50s that's got a bit of cash to smell like. So that's Roger Parfum's Scandal. And my third pick, this one's from the house of Penn Halligans, and this is called Sartorial. Now, I have done a full review on this, so if you want a comprehensive kind of breakdown of this fragrance, check that one out on my channel. Um, but this one is supposed to smell like the cutting room of, of a high-end men's tailors. It definitely picks up elements of that environment. You get like a steamed fabric smell. You get like a metallic smell, which is like the cutting shears used to cut the fabric. You get a beeswax, which is kind of a honey smell. Beeswax is what they use to coat the thread in Taylor's workshop. You get like a dusty note, you get a chalky note. So it's very clever fragrance. There's aroma chemicals in there creating these kind of um, accords that smell like these things that you're supposed to be smelling. But all in all, it's a very classy fougere. Lots of lavender, there's leather, there's some oak moss. It smells like a much better, much classier version of Brute. Um, and it's the best thing that um, Penn Halligans have created in my opinion. So that is sartorial. So there you go guys, they're my three picks. Um, thanks for watching, thanks again to Max for having me. I'm going to pass you over to the next person. Thank you Max for allowing me to participate in this timeless uh, gentleman collaboration video. To me that represents a fragrance that is sophisticated, elegant, classy does not shout but still has body and is timeless so with that my first pick would be green irish tree by creed uh, so many reviews on this one i don't have much to add this is a classic fern it is clean crisp fresh wet green accord that is centered around the beautiful lemon verbena there uh, this uh, the opening to me is harsh but the dry down is to die for so for that, I'm going to forego the hope opening and then just enjoy uh, the rest of the, the, the fragrance, especially on the dry down. Like I said, the beautiful lemon verbena just makes it worth it. Uh, this will appeal to the young gentleman out there. Um, it, it is classy, uh, interesting, but not overly done. So you still have that air of sophistication and then uh, also that air of uh, youthfulness added to this. So this will work all season, and like I said, beautiful option for all ages, young gentlemen out there. Next will be uh, Amouage Diamet. Now this is a beautiful, playful, and mature at the same time type of fragrance. So at the opening, you're gonna get a beautiful fruity floral and a little bit of floral accord coming from the peony note. The fruity accord is coming from the plum and orange just beautiful playful opening and in the dry down you get something that is slightly incense slightly earthy vetiver that still has those uh, fruity floral core in the background making it mature but still playful so this will appeal to the mature gentleman out there that has a playful side to him uh, beautiful option there uh, last but not least would be Bois du Portugal by Creed 
Now this to me is a timeless classic gentleman fragrance. This is a beautiful fresh aromatic uh, cedar scentry fragrance. The cedar wood here is beautiful and is embellished with sandalwood. You have citruses and herbal lavender just making it so beautiful. It's not a cedar dominant fragrance. That's what I like about this. It has an old school vibe, but it is still managed to remain uh, relevant throughout time. So uh, last but not least would be Bois in Portugal by Creed, my favorite um, out of the bunch. Again, thank you and on to the next review. Hi guys, it's Sebastian with Looking, Feeling, Smelling Great. I've got my top three all-time favorite gentleman scents here, so let's get started. And number three is Terry Mouglet Amen. Now this is a big, bold fragrance, especially when it first got launched back in 1996. It was sort of a groundbreaking release. Uh, just after four years when they introduced Angel, which was even more of a groundbreaking release. But this one I find very masculine, big and bold. Patchouli is like the dominant note in here for me. That's what I like about this. It's the signature or trademark DNA of a lot of the Mugler fragrances, both men and women. But this one I find very masculine because of uh, a lot of the notes in here. There's, there's a little bit of lavender which I pick up, but lots of gourmand notes like coffee and caramel. I just find it very masculine and bold and just really love wearing it. I mean, it doesn't get pulled much, but when I want something more masculine and classy that I can just enjoy, uh, I pull for Amen. And it's, the, it's, it's one of the fragrances I would consider that got me really kick-started into wearing lots of fragrance. So Amen at number three. At number two, we've got Heritage by Guerlain. Now, this one's so masculine and gentlemanly for me. I just find it very, very classy and gentlemanly. Really love wearing it. It's very woodsy. Sandalwood is dominant. There's patchouli in here. It's just really classy. I think it's one of those fragrances that you just put on and it just kind of reeks gentleman, like bold and but not overpowering. Kind of just like something that a man would wear to dress up to go to uh, you know work. He's got a suit on or just hanging out with colleagues and things. Business. I find it very businesslike. It just has this. Uh, Kind of like business-like uh, quality just that comes with like uh, like an executive that would be wearing suits and ties and things like that i just find this really really classy and masculine and gentlemanly so it's heritage by guerlain and number one uh, happens to be another guerlain and it's my one of my all-time favorite fragrances it is l'instant de guerlain pour homme extreme now this is the original bottle here uh, and it's, it's getting rebranded once again but uh, I find this very, very classy and masculine and gentlemanly. Now it's a fragrance that I used to wear a lot of. I don't pull for it much now, but it's just, you know, the way I found out about this fragrance is just uh, one of the awesomest stories in my fragrance, um, uh, you know, growth or whatever. But it just sent me down a rabbit hole of finding more perfumes like it. That patchouli again is in here that I find very, very, gentlemanly and classy and bold and uh, with uh, anise or star anise and uh, citrus and um, I guess there's chocolate in here or cacao so the combination is very very masculine and gentlemanly for, for me and I find this kind of a very everyday kind of a fragrance where you can just pull off and keep wearing over and over again again a little probably bolder and more out there compared to heritage or amen but this I find very gentlemanly it's just something I could wear that patchouli dry down is just amazing. So these are my three gentleman scents, my top three favorite gentleman scents with uh, L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme Extreme at number one. Um, thanks so much for watching. Hey Fratcom, Freddie here, part of a great collaboration. Thank you Max for allowing me to be part, uh, to take part in this uh, collaboration. And um, I appreciate uh, being alongside the rest of these reviewers. Um, let's get into it quickly. Uh, it's my top three gentleman fragrances of all times. Now, that's not what I'm going to give you. I'm just going to give you the top three that I currently own, even though my number one will be my number one gentleman fragrance, and my number two may also be my number two. I'm not sure if this is my top three of all times, because there are so many fragrances. But these are the top three that I own. So take it for what you will. Um, at number three, we have from Dior, we have Aqua Fahrenheit. Now, we have, this is such a great scent. Um, I typically wear this for the summertime, 
but I think it's a all year round. You get off the top, you get tangerine, grapefruit. Um, it has the uh, Fahrenheit DNA with the violet, the mint. This one, it has mint, it has vetiver, leather. I think it hits all, and it starts off fresh and bright. Um, but by the time you get to the dry down, it's not like a lot of transitions, but by the time you get to dry down, it's nice and warm, but not so much where it's only good for the cold months, like uh, I would think Fahrenheit is. But this, can, like I said, I wear this basically in the summertime, and um, but I think it's an all year fragrance. And it's very manly. Um, again, you can wear whatever you want, female, all male. But I don't. I, I consider this gentleman fragrance because I wouldn't see. I don't. I wouldn't think a female would want to wear this. Uh, at number two, I have from another one from the House of Dior, or from the Privé collection, and that's Bois de Argent. Now this is one of my all-time favorite scents. Uh, you have the iris, the honey, the amber, and woods, um, alongside with other notes such as leather and off the top of my head I can't um, re uh, remember all of them but this is a very beautiful blended fragrance that I have a hard time picking out most of the notes but the ones I've mentioned are ones that stick out to me um, and I think it's a great versatile all year round every occasion type scent and I think you can't go wrong with that. Um, but I do think a female could pull this one off. Uh, but personally, I like it more on me than I would like on my wife or anything. Now, my number one um, gentleman fragrance would be none other than from the House of Creed. And that's Spice and Wood. Now, I love this fragrance. That I know Aventus gets all the hype, but this is my favorite from the line and one of my favorites of all time. Um, you get basically citrus, spice, citrus, spices, and woods. So the name fits it correctly. It's only missing the citrus on it, but it's a great scent. Um, gentlemen down to the core. Um, this would, this should be in part of everyone's, every gentleman's um, arsenal of fragrances. Now. Uh, some people complain about the uh, longevity and performance. I do have issues with Creed uh, on that base, but to be honest, this one I have no issues. It lasts all day on me. It gives me more than a full work day. But those are my top three gentleman fragrances that I currently own. Um, Till next time, guys, stay blessed. On to the next review. Peace. Namaste guys, Sai Frag Boy Stewie here, Max. Thanks a lot for having me as a part of this collaboration. It's always fun to be a part of these and it's always fun to be collaborating with you. So without any further ado, let's kickstart this list of fragrances which are evocative of a gentleman. Well, I have three picks. The first one is gonna be from the house of Viacel. This is called Loam. Yeah, the classic Loam. In my opinion, this is one of those fragrances which fly under, under the radar. A lot of people know it exists, a lot of people also know it's a really good fragrance, but they don't talk about it. It's a wonderful ginger um, and some bergamot, it has citrusy ginger kind of a vibe without either of those notes dominating each other. It's a perfect balance of those two notes with some wood, some pepper and some florals in the background. This is definitely one of the very best designer based gentlemanly fragrances. Going over to my pick two from the house of Tom Ford. This is from the private blend collection. This is Oud Wood. Can you see that? There we go. <laughs> now Oud Wood is, when you think of the term Oud in a fragrance, immediately a Montal comes to your mind. Honey out and fruity out, whatever, anything with an out. And most of those fragrances are freaking beast mode. They're thick, rich, deep, dense. This is quite the opposite. This is not your typical oud based fragrance. It's kind of along the same realm as Royal Oud from the House of Creed, but I would say this is a bit smoother and this has Essentially, those are, that's what you get. You get oud and woods. 
but they are never, they never get clawing. They are very, very smooth and gentle. There's a reason why this is my most favorite Tom Ford to date. Perfect gentleman scent. If you haven't checked this out already, I strongly recommend that you do. All right, my last pick will be from the house of Amouage, Reflection Man. Uh, what can be said about this fragrance? This is one of those fragrances which, in my opinion, are the very best blended to date in the history of fragrances. Predominantly, this one has jasmine, neroli, and sandalwood. A lot of people say that this one is a clone de la Mal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Now, in my opinion, while that is partially true, I don't think it's completely true. These two are far from clones of each other. Yes, they give off vibes of each other because that neroli, jasmine, and sandalwood combination that this one brings forth kind of coincides in a way with the mint, uh, lavender, and vanilla combination that Lamal puts out. So they give off vibes of each other, but I personally don't think they are clones. No, not at all. This is so much better. I've said in the past that if glass had a scent, then this is what it would smell like. Ironically, this is called Reflection Man, and I'm sure the soundtrack for this would be Mirrors by Justin Timberlake. So guys, those were my picks. Thanks again, Max, for having me in this collaboration. On to the next reviewer. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Carlos from Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Thank you, Max Forti, for inviting me to be a part of your collaboration. I'm very happy to do it. So my favorite getting dressed up fragrances, one of them is definitely Dior Homme. This is the reformulation. I also have the original. They're both just as good. I love them both. Iris based fragrance, but I really like these for getting dressed up. And my absolute favorite for getting dressed up, if you ever see me at an event or a special occasion, it'll definitely be Tom Ford Private Blend Amber Absolute. I actually wore this to Steven of Redolescence's wedding, so uh, yeah, my favorite getting dressed up fragrance. On to the next guy. Hey guys, Manny from the Cascade Sets Fragrance Station here to give you my Timeless Gentlemanly Fragrances, and for the sake of this video, I'll do this in seasons. I'll pick one fragrance per season that I would use in those seasons that I find relatively gentlemanly, and we might as well get a cracking in the season that I'm currently in here in Southern Ontario, Canada. And that is summer, of course. So this is what I'm rocking in the summer, gentleman-wise. It's Guerlain Homme Intense. It has that classic Guerlain Homme DNA with the mojito, but the mint is actually amplified here. And that rum note is to die for, so boozy. And it's just overall a very versatile, gentlemanly fragrance. This is easily rockable and flattering at those formal events in the summer, as well as just casual times as well. Like it's a nice, smart, casual, going out type scent, if you ask me. So if you're looking for a boozy scent for the summer and something that's a little bit classy, definitely check this out. I'm just in love with this. I got it recently and I am getting some wears out of it. I think fans of Guerlain Homme, Guerlain Homme Low, and Guerlain Homme Beauvoise will definitely find this at least rather appealing. Now my next pick is for the fall. It's this right here. It's Terre d'Hermes. And yeah, I actually get a lot of wears out of this during the summer as well, but I think it's the most evocative of the fall weather if you ask me. It has some pepper for a kick, but for the most part, it's a very clean vetiver with some of that orange. And at first it comes off as a dirty orange, at least in the opening to me. And I used to find it very pungent, but I sort of got used to that kind of feel over the months or over the years because I am absolutely in love with this now. Especially when this stuff dries down and people are getting whiffs of it. It's a very gentlemanly, he seems like he has his stuff together kind of scent. You can rock this to formal and smart casual settings and it's just going to work for you and you're just going to come off as some sort of gentleman. I love this. Terre d'Hermes by Hermes. Next up for my gentleman winter scent. Here it is, it's Jubilation 25 Man by Amouage. It's definitely a celebratory scent for those Christmas dinners and stuff like that, and New Year's Eve celebrations if you ask me. Like, I would want to pop champagne with this stuff on, just saying. Of course, Jubilation 25 Man is very indicative of what else you might find from Amouage. You have a lot of olibanum, you have a lot of myrrh, you have a lot of a poppinax, but this one is actually primarily characterized by that opening the blackberry note. It along with the other sweeter notes like the honey is very 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 head turning if you ask me and I just love this stuff so Jubilation 25 Man by Amouage. And last but not least something to rock in the spring for your gentlemanly self 
Port Mesilla by Chanel. Now, if you guys have been on Cascade Sense previously, you'll know that I love my Sheepros, and what better than the oldest Sheepra I actually own. Definitely one of the cleanest lemon openings I have actually ever experienced. I really love this. Of course, as well with the oak moss and the vetiver, it comes off as very clean and very classy. Like, I think this is rather appropriate for work or any daytime scenario in which you don't want to come off as too casual. Like on an April afternoon, a pair of nice slacks and some sort of button up and this, I'm definitely good to go. So to close it out, that is Chanel's Hormesia. And there it is, that about does it for my timeless gentlemanly fragrances. Thank you Max40 for the opportunity to feature me on here and on to the next guy. Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to um, this quick clip for a uh, Max40 collaboration video for our top favorite gentleman scents the fragrances that you know we like to wear when um you know when you're dressed to kill when you're just uh, wearing your best outfits uh, with me particularly i use a lot of suit and tie to work on a daily basis so um i i tend to dress up you know every day at least five days a week so for me um having sophisticated scents is a most so um, needless to say, he said a top three. I think I have like five here. I have a bunch of those, um, you know, type of scents that will fit that suit and tie, dress up, dress to kill um, type of scenarios. However, um, I want to, you know, I want to make this quick, and um, not only because um, you know I don't want to go over five minutes since this is a collaboration video where I'm about to um, run out the door to go to work. So. Um, to me, five scents that I cannot be without in my collection and that I absolutely love for this type of um, scenarios, dressing up, suit and tie, would be the following. Um, first, I will start off with a um, an old classic, a favorite scent of mine, and um, it is from the house of Nasomato, done by Alessandro Gautieri. This particular essence here is called Pardon. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, unsweetened chocolate and magnolia, um, patchouli, there's wood in here. This is fantastic for dressing up occasions. It smells like a million bucks. Next is, um, to me, my personal favorite from Roger Dove. This speaks class and sophistication, guys. Um, this is Enigma, also known in the United States as Creation Inc. Cannot do without this for this type of um, suit and tie dress up occasions. Next is a fragrance that I think is one of the very best scents ever made. Um, it's done by, if I'm not mistaken, Bertrand Duchafort. And um, I have two Bertrand du Chafford scents in here. Actually, no, this is not a Bertrand du Chafford. This is um, a young perfumer, talented perfumer that um, collaborated with MDCI. I can um, actually remember her name now, but this is um, Invasion Barbar, an all-time classic fougere, aromatic um, lavender scent, barbershop-like, with an ultra-sophisticated touch of um, a favorite of mine, Invasion Barbar. Next, is a Bertrand du Chafford scent, and this is one of his best of all times, also from MDCI. This is a classic Shepra with a modern twist. This is called Shepra Paladin. This is gorgeous. Um, this, this, is, this is what dreams are made of. This smells like a million bucks. Ultra sophisticated and a favorite of mine. Shepra Paladin from MDCI. And last but certainly not least, a fragrance from a house that doesn't really get talked you know, that much in YouTube. Don't know why. Um, this is more of an obscure house. It's, um, the owner of this house is actually um, Stefan Humber Lucas, and um, he's a talented perfumer. And this is right here is gorgeous. It's beautiful, sort of like cognac, sitting on a woody base of, um, like you know, um, touch of cedar wood and wood, and it's just amazing. A little bit creamy. Um, it almost has like a sweet. Um, Rosewood according here as well, but um, the booziness is just to die for and it's ultra sophisticated This is from the house of so wood is called Jadab um, This is absolutely stunning. So Guys, this is it real quick video five cents. Hope you'll enjoy this one until next time. I'm your boy Renee Stay blessed for come dress well smell even better and uh, I'll see you also so my first choice, straight from the 90s, now this is a fragrance, if you follow my channel, you know that I absolutely go gaga over this fragrance, and I've had so many stories with this fragrance, and let's just say, let's leave that for another video. But the fragrance I'm talking about is the amazing Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme. This one here is definitely here to stay. I have a couple of bottles of this that will definitely last me a while. And this is one, when I'm thinking about dressing to impress, this is one of the ones that I really reach for. This has an amazing citrus, 
aromatic uh, with a tobacco, a vetiver, a honeyed vetiver uh, going on. And this vintage edition here just gives you this amped up, you know, amazing feel that will make you smell like a million bucks. The next fragrance is an epitome of sophistication, class, and elegance in the bottle. A fragrance that speaks length of what a true gentleman should smell like. Of course, I'm talking about Tom Ford's Private Blend Italian Cypress. Straight from 2008, this is an amazing fragrance. A combination of citruses, basil, mint, it give you a little bit of an herbal feel, and the amazing woodsy undertones with cypress will give this a creamy, traditional, classic, sophisticated sense that's just an amazing scent to complement any outfit, any attire you pick to dress to impress. Lastly, but certainly not least, I couldn't put a gentleman list without this fragrance. This is an amazing alpha male elixir, and of course I'm talking about Creed's Aventus. This scent climbed to the top of the charts and today is one of the most sought for niche fragrances in the world. And it's all due to what effect you get when you put this fragrance on. When you dress to impress, whether you're going fine casual or you know upscale, this fragrance here will give you an amazing amount of compliments and I guarantee you the people around you are gonna ask you, what are you wearing? Aventus is definitely a male elixir when you're trying to dress to impress. So these were my picks. First and foremost, I'd like to take a minute to thank all my fellow reviewers to taking time out of their busy lives and schedules to put together their videos and their choices. Thank you so much. From the bottom of my heart, it means a lot. That's all we have for you. I hope that you take all these amazing choices and I hope that you try them when you're trying to complement your amazing attires. As I am sure all of these picks are proof to make any outfit shine. Get ready to impress and get showered with compliments. This was your host, Max Forte. Till next time, stay fragrant.